God, there's so many challenges for CAR-T. And I think one of the, the biggest sort of problems for me and the elephant in the room with CAR-T is the intention to treat because, you know, for the number of patients that I actually see in the clinic and the number that I manage to get to CAR-T, and this is mainly in the context of our, we've got an NHS uh, national CAR-T cell um, delivery scheme. Um, and and there do it, it tends to be very challenging actually getting those patients, navigating those patients from the point of referral through to the point of, infusion and part of that is because of manufacturing challenges you know to, to ask a patient with very aggressive disease to wait for six weeks for a product to be available and um, it's just sometimes not feasible you know these, these patients they you know their, their disease progresses and, and and they become ineligible for treatment so i think all of us have got to have as a big priority s- streamlining that whole process, you know, improving manufacture, you know, there's lovely sort of 24 hour uh, manufacturing processes that are being piloted in lots of different studies. And I think that's the direction that we should all be aiming for. And of course, the sort of sort of third party products, you know, if we could just get those efficacy outcomes and, and those persistence outcomes to, to where we are in the autologous CAR T cell space, I think allogeneic CAR T cell obviously, you know, holds lots of the answers um, for us and um, for the future. Um, and in terms of, you know, we, we're still stuck with this dilemma in the high grade B cell lymphoma space of, you know, we administer the cells uh, and, and only 40 percent of patients will get a durable response. So we're still left with this 60 percent um, for whom the therapy won't work and they have to go through that whole process, which is really challenging for them physically and emotionally. And why are those patients not responding? So I think, you know, all the other avenues that we can explore, including uh, you know, differential targeting, so broadening our horizons beyond CD19 and looking at other markers. Certainly, um, you know, technologies to improve the expansion profile of the CAR Ts that we're delivering to patients, um, and and also arming those CAR Ts, or just sort of almost seeing them like a little delivery vehicle for other modules that can potentially interfere with the tumor microenvironment, which in the lymphoma is trying very hard to switch the CAR T cell activity off. So those are the sorts of kind of broad directions of travel in terms of, you know, it's sort of the CAR T cell specific um, interventions that we can make to improve efficacy. And I guess we also have to look at, you know, how we prepare our patients for CAR T. We need better bridging because this whole intention to treat question. Yes, we can make faster, you know, potentially we can make products more quickly, but you know, we need to have better ways of reducing that disease burden before the patient gets CAR T because the evidence is really overwhelming that um, if you can reduce the burden, you can improve the outcomes and you can also reduce the toxicity. So yeah, ne- next generation, bridging strategies, more radiotherapy, you know, more um, R-bend pola type regimens, more sort of, you know, novel immune therapy approaches. I think that will really help to transform our outcomes, certainly in the high grade lymphoma space.